fish key and it gives you such a sense of place and a sense of um, being part of something as well, I think. South Tyneside has its own annual festival during the summer with major acts at Bent's Park. Add the work of the Customs House at Mildam, South Shields Museum and the RBL of Roman Fort and you have a vibrant mix of entertainment and culture in both North and South Shields. My name's Colin Smolt. I'm 42 years old and I live in the town which I was born, South Shields, which is a small seaside town about 10 miles east of Newcastle. My occupation is a shopkeeper. It's essentially what people used to refer to as a head shop. I sell things like pipes and bongs, which 20 years back might have been seen as being very risky, but in this day and age it's all fairly acceptable. It's only a tiny shop with a minimal amount of trade, but I'm my own boss and if it pays the bills then I'm quite happy. So that allows me plenty of time to pursue my other hobbies and interests, and my main one is local live music. I've been the singer and the guitarist in the band called Shulmouth for the last 11 years now and we play various gigs and pubs scattered right across the region. The songs are all rock cover versions but the pub rock scene is huge in the northeast of England and on a Friday or Saturday night there are probably a hundred pubs or more putting on live entertainment featuring full on rock bands. South Shields alone has half a dozen pubs that put on live music and the largest of these is called The Office. Not only does my own band play at the venue but I'm also responsible for the booking of the acts I get to play there every weekend. The acts are mainly small local bands playing a variety of covers, but now and then we'll put on special events that feature tribute bands, and some of these might even be from out the area. I'm a rocker at heart, but I find in this region there are a lot of people that love the same kind of music, so I'll book the bands that people want to see the most. I'm pretty passionate about live music, and I'll only book the very best out of the talent that we have. Some people may say it's a bit sad, and may view it as just a bunch of middle-aged fogies trying to recapture their youth. But nostalgia is a big booming industry and if people want to hear songs from their youth being played live in the local pubs, then who am I to deny them? Whether the bloke singing the songs or the guy that books the band to do the job, I'm content to know that I'm doing my bit to help people have a good time after a long week at work. Well, my name's Harry Pattinson and uh, I tattoo from 29 King Street in South Shales. We've been here since 1986. Well, when I first started tattooing, basically it was uh, a tattoo was something that well, it was sought after. It wasn't like, a, as it is now, like a fashion accessory. Uh, what it was then, there were very few tattooists around. I mean, this shop was the first registered tattoo studio in the whole of South Tyneside. Supplies were very hard to get. There wasn't many people supply tattoo equipment or inks and uh, buy stuff from a registered supplier, you had to be a registered tattooist. Uh, I work at Tattoo You and South Shields with Harry Pattinson. I served a three and a half year apprenticeship and since February 28th of this year I've been registered tattooer. South Shields has always been a rock town and even when fans and fears of music have passed, like the indie culture of the late 80s and the big dance boom of the 90s, and you've still got the rock scene. Or might be getting older, greyer and fatter, but I think a lot of people in this town will always have a massive place in their hearts for that kind of music. 1977, the nucleus of the band really was me, Decker and Mond. Well me, Mency and Decker had known each other since we were kids. We used to, we used to hang out at the shops at Brockley Winds. It was him. Um, he had Decker and forming a band. And you, you were going to be the drummer and I wasn't doing too much at the time, I thought well, it would be a bit practice. Well, I had a couple of bass players come and go. I used to rehearse uh, initially in a, a youth club called Percy Hudson in, um, in Bitter Call and I seem to remember the first gig was there, I think we did a show for the kids. And we only knew six songs. <laughs> You used to have played the, played the same six songs with three times. We found out you could hire the Bolingbroke Hall and South Shields for about £10 or something like that. And we had a big enough following by then to be able to do that. You used to get two or three hundred people in. We used to play there regular and I mean, what we'd, what we'd done for, for like, you know, the pension as it was like, yeah, that mission was like a bag of coal. <laughs> We've always had people from this town have been so fanatical about the bands that they have followed. I've grown up with many of them from my late teens onwards, and some that remain just as passionate about their music now as they were over 25 years ago. A plane near the end of near the end of the all clear, a plane flew very close overhead on fire. It crashed at the right hand side at the bottom of Beach Road and it blew up. Killed the fireman killed the airmen, blew down the, um, the, the building that houses the little boats, the little yachts, and um, just created mayhem. If you could grapple in the lake with 
bent coat hangers and pull something out with a, a German writing on. This was this was a swappable article, and I pulled out a flying boot. I've got a flying boot! I shouted. So they all came running along. Hey, that's great. Let's have where are you? And then I put my hand inside the flying boot. Hand, I point out, and pulled out what appeared to be cooked tripe. This wobbling, jellified, whitey, creamy skin. And of course, it was the poor man's boot. It was his foot that had been blown off. 1977 was an extraordinary year. It was a year of royalty and revolution. It was the storm that followed the calm. In the Northeast, we saw a visit from the American president, Jimmy Carter. And in the same year, the Queen came to South Shields as part of her Silver Jubilee. The very next day, a king came to town. It was the middle of July and uh, the end of June was my, my 21st birthday and I'd been given a, a Zenith E SLR camera for my birthday. So I hadn't really had that much experience of, of using the new camera and I went down to, to take some photographs. And I managed to catch Ali as, as he was coming along uh, past the fairground and uh, the Sea Hotel. Uh, and got some great shots of him on the, on the bus itself. Uh, fairly apparent that he was playing the crowds, he was pointing at people, he was threatening to jump out the bus and chin somebody, or <laughs> that kind of thing. And really, really working the crowd as well. Um, unfortunately, it was, like I say, I didn't have the experience. I probably didn't take as good a photos as I could have now, but... But away from the glamour and celebrity, a sense of frustration was taking hold. The soundtrack was one of anger. The future seemed bleak, and the music was reflecting that. I think the music change in 1977 was really down to the blandness that was being presented in the charts. Novelty singles, very middle of the road stuff, but bands appearing on top of the pops that were no better than a cabaret act, and it was no wonder that punk revolution came along. When punk came along, I was much more aware of it because it's so direct. It was one of these where it was, hang on a minute, no, I'm not going to swallow that anymore. No, 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 that's, that's not right. You know, I've got, I want some questions answered here, you know. He says, well, the power on call will do great balls of fire. So it's sort of, goodness gracious, great, psh, like that, with the lighter. And the keyboard would go up, but I says he'd be right next to him with the bloody fire extinguisher. You see? Well, he put the whole bloody tin on it. You see on this piano. So anyway, it's a blaze. They're all killing themselves on the bloody audience, the thicker part of the show. So they are standing like Tate. His fingers are all on fire. So I shoved the piano out like that to try and put it out. It went straight through his new glass stage. Polystyrene tiles up behind there are bloody. The curtains are a bloody light and everything. Bearing in mind we'd been there five nights. When all the flames were put out and gone, you should have seen the state of that stage. He says, well, you're the man for the money, kid. Go and get paid. <laughs> I remember. That's all went. What's the fierce? I said, who do I say to get paid? Paid? Are you stupid? It cost 10,000 pounds worth of damage here. 